Hi guys, this is Ms. Romani. This lesson will serve as an introduction to the nutrition unit. Nutrition, it's a big topic and a very important one that we will explore in this unit. I mean, what is nutrition? Well, nutrition is a science. It is the science that studies food and its relationship to health. So then the important question is, what is the right kind of food to eat in order to get the best possible health? And that is the question that we will explore in this unit. Because our diet, the foods that we eat and drink on a regular basis, have an undeniable effect on our health. Some experts believe that nutrition may be the single most important factor for preventing aging too quickly, for keeping a healthy body weight, for staying healthy and avoiding infectious diseases by strengthening our immune system, for reducing our risk of chronic diseases like, say, heart disease, diabetes, or cancers, and for promoting just overall health and well-being. So if we eat the right foods, we can be healthy. Easy, right? But what are the right foods? We are bombarded by information, often conflicted information, about what we should and shouldn't eat, what is healthy and what isn't, what type of diet we should follow. Should we follow a low-carb or keto diet? Inter well, what about intermittent fasting? Or a Mediterranean diet? Or a vegan diet? Pescatarian? Paleo diets? Should we count calories? Should we count macros? Should we avoid fats? Or is it carbs that we should avoid? And what's the deal with gluten? What is the right answer? Unfortunately, I don't have all the answers, to be honest. Mostly because there isn't actually a full consensus about this topic, even among scientists. But I can tell you this. I will help you understand the science and why certain foods are healthier than others. And I believe that by the time that we are done, you will arrive to the same conclusion I've come to. But the answer is actually quite simple. It's about balance. And it's about portion control. But mostly, it's about eating more of the right types of nutrients that are found in whole foods and avoiding processed foods as much as possible. Ultimately, the reason why the science of nutrition gets so complicated is because food is so essential to our survival. We need to eat. There are two main reasons why we need to eat. We need to consume nutrients for energy and to build our bodies. Food is fuel. As long as we don't overeat, most of the food consumed in a day is actually converted into the energy we use to fuel our daily lives and that our cells need to fuel their activities and chemical reactions. A lot of that energy is also converted or lost as heat, which is actually good because it helps us maintain our body temperature. The other reason we eat is, of course, to build our body parts so that we can grow bigger and so that we can repair injuries and replace old and worn out body cells and tissues. So there's a saying, right? You are what you eat. And it is literally true. Your body needs the proper building blocks or materials to make new cells. And that comes from your food. When we eat, we digest the food and break it apart into its basic nutrients, which are then absorbed into our bloodstream until they reach our cells. And it is important that we eat right so that we can give our bodies the right nutrients and the proper amount of nutrients it needs to build new molecules and to build new cells and new tissues. So what are nutrients then? There are six classes of nutrients, carbohydrates, which are mainly used as a source of energy, proteins and the amino acids they are made of, which basically make up our tissues like muscle, bones, hair and nails, as well as most of our important molecules like hormones and enzymes, fats, which also give us energy, but can also help with normal growth and development, with immune function, vitamin absorption, hormone production, brain cell development, and to build our cell membranes. There are also 13 essential vitamins, which have important jobs such as keeping our nerves healthy, helping us resist infection, assisting with blood clotting, and keeping our metabolism running. There are also 15 different minerals, which we need in small amounts, but play very important roles in muscle contraction, nerve conduction, fluid balance, bone building, regulation of blood pressure, and so much more. 
And last but certainly not least is water, which is needed daily and is used to regulate our body temperature to dissolve and deliver nutrients and molecules throughout our bodies. It acts as a shock absorber, a lubricant, and helps in the removal of waste and essentially makes up about 60% of our body mass. And I know this was a lot of information. So each of these nutrients will be the focus of separate lessons in this unit. But for now, I just want to talk about how we can categorize these nutrients. And the first way we can do this is by how much of each nutrient we need to consume every day. And so we divide the nutrients into the macronutrients, which we need to consume in our diet in large quantities. These are the carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and water. And the micronutrients, which are also needed daily, but in tiny quantities. And these would be the vitamins and minerals, which are important for our health, but only in tiny amounts. I was trying to find a picture that conveyed that concept, and I thought this one was appropriate. Because, obviously, we would not consume a whole bowl of vitamins and mineral supplements. That would most likely kill us. So when it comes to nutrients, there's definitely such a thing as too much of a good thing. Now, this may seem strange, but another way we can categorize our nutrients has to do with whether or not we actually need to get them from the food that we eat. There are nutrients that are considered to be non-essential nutrients, and these nutrients are important for our health, but we just don't need to get them directly from our diet. And that's because our bodies have a way of making these nutrients from other nutrients that we do get from our diet. For example, sugars or carbohydrates, they're pretty much all non-essential. If our bodies need sugars, they have ways of converting other nutrients like, say, fats or proteins into sugars. The process occurs in the liver and involves several steps, but essentially, if we need carbohydrates, our bodies can make them for us. Fats are also non-essential. We can usually make most of the fats that we need from other fats in our diet or from extra sugars that we do consume. And last, we have some non-essential amino acids. Basically, about half the amino acids uh, found in proteins are non-essential. For example, the amino acid tyrosine, which is a building block of some of our important brain chemicals or neurotransmitters, like, for example, dopamine or adrenaline. Um, if we don't get tyrosine from our food, it's okay, because we can actually convert the amino acid phenylalanine, which we must get from our food, into tyrosine. Now, if we don't get any tyrosine or phenylalanine, then we are just completely out of luck because then we can't make any proteins that require tyrosine and we also cannot make anything that would require phenylalanine. And that's because phenylalanine is considered to be an essential nutrient. There are about 40 nutrients that we must get from our diet and are what we call essential. Essential nutrients are those that we cannot make and they differ for different species. For example, um, cats and dogs can make their own vitamin C, but humans cannot. So unlike cats and dogs, if we don't get enough fruits and vegetables in our diet, we can actually develop a life-threatening condition called scurvy. And cats and dogs don't develop scurvy because they can actually make their vitamin C from some of the nutrients that are in the foods that they do eat. Basically, all vitamins and minerals are essential for us. We simply cannot make them. Also, 9 of the 20 amino acids and 2 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids, are essential. We cannot build these nutrients from other nutrients, and they must come from our food. And they're essential for our health. If we don't get them from our food, and then we have to go without them. And if that happens for long enough, then we would be at risk of something called nutrient deficiencies. And depending on the nutrient, nutrient deficiencies have the potential to make us very, very sick and can lead to malnutrition. Malnutrition happens when a body is not provided with the right nutrients it needs to stay healthy. And for years, we've associated malnutrition with famine, with people who were just not getting enough food to eat, a condition we now call undernutrition. But now we know that malnutrition is common even in people who are getting enough food, and especially those who are obese. And that is because it's not just about the quantity of nutrients. It is not just about getting enough food. It is equally about the quality of the nutrients we consume. It is about getting the right types of food. We can be malnourished even if we eat lots of food that provide us with more than enough calories 
if that food is missing the essential micronutrients, the vitamins and the minerals that we need to stay healthy. And that's the end of today's lesson. For the next few lessons, we will explore in more detail each of the six nutrients with a particular focus on making healthier food choices. I'll talk to you later.